Good morning. The conventional thinking about aging is that everything is downhill. That as you get older, your brain shrinks and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, hundreds of research studies have shown that that is not the case. You can indeed defy the effects of aging on your brain. You can. You can do that by growing your brain. Yes, you can grow your brain, in fact, in a matter of weeks. Let me explain. Are you interested? When I was a little boy in Iran, my father always talked to me about our brain's amazing ability to change. He told me the story of a little girl who was born without arms. Out of necessity, she had learned to hold a brush or a pencil in between her toes, and she could make the most beautiful paintings and sketches. My dad said, Majid, you too can develop any part of your brain and achieve any goal you set for yourself. There is no limit on what your brain can do for you. I became interested in the brain so much so that I went on to become a neurologist and a neuroscientist. For 30 years, I've been studying neuroplasticity in our brain. Why is it and how is it that our brain, the very organ that makes us who we are, can change? And more importantly, how can we harvest our brain's innate, innate ability to increase its capacity to defy the fix of aging on the brain? I have learned that the part of the brain that has the highest degree of malleability is hippocampus. Hippocampus is important for short-term memory. I want to get your hippocampus to work. Are you ready? I want you to memorize the word hippocampus. Okay, say it. Not any campus, hippocampus. Now, hippocampus is roughly the size of your thumb. You have one on the right, one on the left. And it's, this is ground zero for learning and memory. Another part of the brain that has high degree of malleability is cortex, is the outer layer of the brain like a blanket that covers the other parts of the brain. This part of the brain is also important for your higher cognitive abilities, your ability to read, write, type, do your taxes, win an argument with your spouse, running your business. These cognitive abilities depend on cortex. Now, there are some good news about hippocampus and cortex and some bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? I thought you would say that. The bad news is that hippocampus and cortex shrink by about 0.5% per year after age 50. This shrinkage is mild for some people, and they develop mild cognitive issues. But for others, there's a huge amount of shrinkage, and they end up being confused and get diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. What I and other researchers in the field have discovered is that Alzheimer's is the best known cause for shrinkage in the brain, but it's not the only cause. Many different medical conditions, many common medical conditions, shrink your cortex and hippocampus by a lot. For example, if you hit your head here or here or here, it's the hippocampus that shrinks. So now I want you to look at these uh, brain MRI, and uh, tell me which hippocampus is bigger. Researchers wanted to know whether the concussion-induced shrinkage of hippocampus can happen in college students. So they invited a group of college students and put them in three groups. Those who did not play American football, those who played American football did not have concussion, and those who played American football and had concussion. So which hippocampus is smaller, the one in the no football group or the one in the concussion group? 
Do you see it? So which, which hippocampus is smaller? No football or concussion? Isn't that incredible? These are kids in their 20s who have a hippocampus that would, you would see in an 80-year-old. In fact, three weeks ago, I saw a 16-year-old who was brought to me because he had lost his memory and he plays American football. And when I looked at his uh, brain MRI, his hippocampus was at one percentile, a 16-year-old. So this is a real problem. And the uh, hippocampus and cortex do shrink with aging. But what are the other conditions that can shrink your cortex and hippocampus? The sleep apnea, a condition in which a person is overweight, snores at night, and feels sleepy during the day. That can reduce the size of your cortex and hippocampus by 18%. Obesity, insomnia, stress, depression, and concussion can all shrink your hippocampus just like Alzheimer's can shrink your hippocampus. Isn't that frightening? Isn't it? Well, that's the bad news. The good news is that you can literally grow your brain. And I would like you to give you an example of how you, someone in their 20s and 30s, can grow the size of a hippocampus. <laughs> well, the best way you can grow your hippocampus is to increase the amount of oxygen to your brain. Exercise is literally the best way to have a larger hippocampus. Let me tell you one thing. When it comes to hippocampus and cortex, size matters. The larger your cortex and hippocampus are, the more resilient you will be to effects of aging and Alzheimer's disease. So one way you can grow your hippocampus is to exercise. Research has shown that people who walk one mile a day reduce their risk of Alzheimer's disease by 48%. Now, many of you are executives, and you don't want to wait too long. You want a quick answer. Well. A quick answer is that you can grow your hippocampus in three months. You don't believe that, do you? Well, I want you to look at these pictures that show a person before and after three months of vigorous exercise. The hippocampus is outlined in blue. Which hippocampus is bigger, the one before exercise or after three months of exercise? Isn't that incredible? This is not someone's biceps we're talking about. This is a part of the brain for learning a memory. This is ground zero for learning new things. And we can grow that part of the brain with vigorous exercise in a matter of months. What else can grow our brain? Mediterranean diet, taking omega-3 fatty acids, learning new things, sleeping well, meditating, and having a purpose in life. Having a positive mindset Having a mindset of pursuing your dreams, doing what you feel passionate about, has beneficial effects on your brain. In fact, research studies have shown that people who have a sense of purpose in life can harbor significant amount of Alzheimer's pathology in their brain and have no symptoms. Yes, it is possible for you to have Alzheimer's in your brain but have no symptoms if your brain is healthy and strong otherwise. Your hippocampus could be the size of your thumb or the size of your pinky. And what you do in your life would determine which way your size of the campus would go. So you can take responsibility on whether or not your cortex and hippocampus is small, on whether or not you have memory loss or not. Now, these things have all been shown to be the case in research setting in academic centers. But do they really happen on an average person who shows up in a neurology practice? To answer this question, I started my own neurology institute and put, to, put together a program called Brain Fitness Program. In this program, I provide a personalized set of interventions for my patients. I treat their medical problems, and then I provide them with meditation training, brain training, sleep counseling, diet counseling, exercise training, and then I monitor their progress every week. One of my patients was Carol. She was confused for about a year. She would sit in front of a TV every day doing nothing but watching TV. Her sister brought her to me 
so that I can confirm her diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease so that she can have power of attorney, sell her house, and pay for her nursing home. When I reviewed her medical history, I realized she had many of the medical conditions I told about. She was also taking 20 medications. So I started by tapering her medications and treating her sleep apnea, her depression, and all the other uh, problems that she had. And she started our program and worked with our brain coaches. And every week, she was blossoming. Every week, she was a little bit more interactive. By halfway in the program, she was walking 20, 30 minutes a day, and she was actually having conversations that she could do some of the brain games. By week seven or eight, she would, come to the gym, she would come to our brain center in a gym outfit and a bag on her shoulder. And by the time she finished, she was taking Zumba classes and was looking for a job. Now, she was really turned around, and she was a totally new person. We looked at her brain MRI before the program and after the program. Now, this is a real-life person who did this. Which hippocampus is bigger, the one before the program or after the program? Yes, her hippocampus grew. Now, she was a very actually interesting and lively person. She came to see me every three months. And a year later, she said, Dr. Fatuhi, do you think my hippocampus is still big? Or has it gone back now that I have not been a part of that boot camp you had for me? So we obtained another brain MRI. We saw that the growth in hippocampus, which was 8.6%, equivalent of a brain that's about 17 years younger, had actually grown one more percent. This is because she had five new hobbies and she was doing everything she had learned and she was really doing them. She was using her brain, she was active, she was socializing. And we provided this program for 127 other elderly with a stage before Alzheimer's disease. 84% of them had significant objective improvements in their cognitive test results. 84% of these people who were just about to be sent to nursing home and they were giving up hope, had hope and they were doing things. I published these uh, findings in the Journal of Prevention of Alzheimer's Disease, and this was later featured on a four-page article in Time magazine. What I would like you to appreciate is that your brain is an organ, like many other organs you have, your eyes, your skin, your hair, your heart, your knees. There are things you could do to make it shrivel away. And there are things you could do to make it younger and stronger every year. The things you could do to shrink it is to have medical problems and not take care of them. So if you have diabetes, obesity, sleep apnea, concussion, depression, and stress, all of these would shrink your brain more so in late life than if you have a grandmother who had Alzheimer's disease. More importantly, I want you to know you can really reverse the process. And this is not hypothetical. Research studies have shown you absolutely can do that. You can really defy aging by simple lifestyle changes such as getting fit, eating a Mediterranean diet, taking omega-3 supplements, learning new things, sleeping well, meditating, and following your passion. Do what you feel passionate about. In doing so, you can grow your brain, and you can have a brain that's stronger by the time you get to your 70s and 80s. You should think of your brain the same way you think of your teeth. You need to do something about it so that you keep it healthier and stronger. If you have stress, realize there is nothing is worth your hippocampus. My sister always tells me what to do in, in taking care of my children, what should I do to with my wife, with my job. She's six years younger and acts like she's my mother. And what I tell her is, Mariam June, I love you. Everything you say is right. I'm not going to waste my hippocampus for you. <laughs> so I want you to know there are many things within your control that you can do every day to keep your brain young and strong. And I have a challenge for you. My challenge for you is to have a better brain next year when you meet in Cape Cod. I want you to grow your hippocampus by 1%. And after that, grow your hippocampus one more percent the following year. 
it is really the new way of thinking that as we go through our 40s and 50s, there's a new childhood. We should think about our brain as a new beginning. We should work on growing our hippocampus and cortex because it is possible. And by doing that, you vaccinate your brain against Alzheimer's disease. By the time you get to your 70s and your 80s, you have so much brain, Alzheimer's can't do much to you. You can have Alzheimer's in your brain and have no symptoms. It is really possible. You really can grow your brain, and in doing so, you can defy aging. Thank you.